Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Avatar video. This is going to be my thoughts on the first look that we got at Netflix live action Avatar The Last Airbender at the Netflix To Dumb event uh, last night. So I did a live stream very uh, shortly after the Avatar segment, uh, so I did talk about it last night, but I want to have a more just uh, contained video here ju that's just my opinions on what we got to see. So uh, jumping straight in with what we actually did get to see. So obviously we got uh, four images, uh, one of each of the four main characters, so uh, Aang, Katara, Sokka, and Zuko. We also got the uh, logo uh, of the show revealed, uh, as well as a, a ge generic 2024 release date, and a weird video that is just the four like element or nation symbols um, done in kind of interesting graphical kind of ways that, that looks kind of nice. But that's the entire video leading up to like the, the logo. So um, all the rumors about what we were going to get were basically correct. Like this was not anything super substantial. Um, overall, it was very much a first look. And because of that, my overall opinions on this are going to be uh, grounded by the idea that I don't think we have seen enough to be able to form any sort of a like particularly concrete opinion, especially because I feel the visuals, which is kind of the only real thing that we can actually give a bit of a sense of, the, the visuals of the characters, the costumes, um, was something I was relatively confident about them doing somewhat well in the first place because I felt the last Airbender movie, one of the things I think you have to give that movie credit for is that the costumes uh, in, in that movie were perfectly fine for the approach, the kind of more serious, kind of realistic approach they were going for. So this making an adjustment using some of the benefits there, making some adjustments should never have been anywhere near having, I think, a lot of criticism leveled at its costumes. And in that sense, I, I think that's been the kind of most of the reaction. Is everyone happy? No. Is everyone annoyed? No. A, the impression I get from the fandom is that it is middle but leaning positive that like it looks good people are I think are optimistic that when we get to see more of this um, it should be better it should look better as we kind of go on. Um, so I, I roughly uh, agree with that as well there are elements that I quite like and um, there are elements that I don't like but the core of this is just kind of middle of the road. Again, this was the thing I completely expected. Um, the elements of the show that I'm interested in, that is where the worry, I think, would come into play, which are the elements of the last Airbender movie that were really bad. So stuff like the script, the dialogue that the actors are going to have to say, what they cut, what episodes they cut, scenes they cut, uh, add in. Those are the big things that I think we, we need to see for this show that we didn't get to see. So, for instance, we didn't see any of these actors say a line as their character. So we don't know what the dialogue is like. We just only get to judge what these four characters, uh, these actors, look like in the costume for their characters. And even then, I'm not even sure we can say f fully too much about that because um, Ang pretty good but i think the other three i'm not i'm not sure that the outfits that we see them in are going to be the outfits that they're going to be in for most of the screen time that they have on the show so um let's kind of get into this here and we'll discuss these so first up we have ang of course my immediate reaction to seeing this was a little bit like oh like it, it's it's a lot like they, they've gone fully for the colors they've gone animation accurate with the colors it's yellowy oranges full on airbender colors and uh, the arrow tattoo is vivid blue it has detailing inside of it but it is a block of blue as a tattoo and that's an interesting choice because of what the last airbender movie did and um, i feel it feels a tad leaning towards the sort of cosplay -y side of things where I think there's maybe been too much of an attempt to be accurate to the source material where it probably needed a little bit of that adaptation adjustment to acknowledge that we're in live action here, not in animation, and, and maybe some adjustments 
uh, could have been needed. Because if you go to how Aang looked in the last Airbender movie, you'll see that this is how the tattoo was. It was still an arrow, but it was a bunch of scattered kind of pieces of tattoo that formed it. Now, my issue with this was that I think it was almost so scattered that you almost didn't get the sense that it was actually a meant to be a kind of block that made up the the arrow tattoo and so in certain shots you almost didn't notice he had a tattoo because there's so much space where you can see his skin and um, but i like the decision to not just have it be a block of plain blue i think they've over course corrected here in that they've kept some of the detailing inside but I still feel it just on a glance without zooming in on the details does look a little bit like, oh, it's just like an arrow painted on his head. Whereas I think what they need to do and they maybe should have done is find some sort of a middle ground between this and this. Where to me, maybe have, have a little bit of gaps in the blue between some of the detailing parts here. So you can see bits and pieces of his skin in the middle of the tattoo, but it still is a core block of blue that you can see. So it is very clear that it is a blue arrow tattoo at all times, but the detailing comes across a little bit more because you get the contrast. Whereas obviously here, the problem is that you almost ignore the tattoo because it's kind of too scattered almost so um nothing crazy bad there it's just uh noticeable i think that it's not perfectly done overall uh, as for the outfit so obviously the, we're talking about kind of vivid colors versus kind of the more muted realism that they went for here and um, again this is probably one of those things where like some people are going to like the fact that it's super accurate. Some people are going to find that, well, it's live action. Have you done an adaptation correctly here? Because in the movie, I actually liked their approach of kind of going more for the kind of almost Jedi robe style thing, where if you saw the flashback in this movie, you could see more of the colors kind of coming into play. And Aang's like uh, cloak that he wore had some of the color on it as well. But his core outfit for when he's in action is realistic kind of normal colors. Um, whereas this is quite bright, almost too bright, I would say. And I think, again, some blend in between these two is maybe the direction that you should have gone in. And I'd love to know what the logic was behind this of like, they had to have looked at the way they did it first time in live action and considered some of the stuff here and considered the fan reaction. And I feel they might have strayed away because if people noted too many similarities to the last airbender movie they would have been criticized just because it's the last airbender movie uh, and and i kind of feel that that might be what forced them to maybe go a little bit too accurate but i do think the actor kind of seems to embody the character of ang uh, pretty well in that if you saw him in the interviews I think he's going to be able to do the humorous scenes well I think he'll be able to do the serious scenes like this well and um, but again I do wish we had seen some of them in action speaking just seen a little bit of footage and um, similarly and I'm probably going to say this about all of them I wish we had just got like a selection of images for the characters that just are them maybe it's from the exact same scene but just a few frames later just to see a little bit more like I wish he was facing the camera so we could see the arrow better I wish we could maybe see the back of his hand so we could see the arrow tattoo on his hands and um, I wish it was zoomed out a little bit more so we could see like the legs and see like the boots and, and the other elements of the design and um, and maybe see more of the glider um, and, and that's kind of part of the problem with it being the first look is that if the shot isn't great you could feel like you're missing out on quite a lot of it so we'll move on to Katara then and um, so this is an example of like she's not going to be wearing this coat I think for like the entire movie I'm pretty sure we'll see her in more of a typical Katara outfit for most of the movie when they're not in the water tribes um, and, and in that sense, I think this is where you see, again, the colors coming out. And interestingly, quite a lot of white, uh, just even on the detailing here in the middle. Um, almost, I would say, maybe too much white. Versus the last Airbender movie, when it came to the uh, kind of cold weather clothing. 
they went very kind of realistic here, not really having the colors, but they had the colors on what they were wearing underneath the kind of cold weather clothing. So the, the colors came out there without being super crazy bright. And I actually liked the way uh, so the, the costume for Katara worked in the, in the movie. Uh, and then this is what uh, Sokka looked like. Again, slightly muted blues, but still very clearly Water Tribe blue. Um, here... Um, Again, it, it, I think it's just the fact that like it, the, they're showing her with a kind of alternate outfit that we'll only see in maybe a few scenes. Uh, also, the specific shot here, her hands covering up like some of the detailing on the coat, uh, covering up the betrothal necklace for the most part. So some of the key visual elements of Katara we don't get to see because it's a kind of weirdly chosen shot. But we do get to see a bit of the bending here. So Katara trying to, you know, manipulate a ball of water here um looks fine but uh, i don't think there's too much to say about like how representative of bending that actually is otherwise we have the kind of hair loopies here which seem fine i've seen a few people point out that like do these look um a little bit too almost like kind of like modern as if they were kind of like made out of plastic rather than um kind of feeling like an in-universe kind of uh, kind of piece but i don't mind too much uh, there the the hairstyle overall i think is is perfectly fine and i think the the actress i think gives impressions that i i, I think she will be able to do katara quite well um, and again th this is just pro I, I, th I think the katara image is probably one of the the worst ones just in terms of the shot choice where we i think get to see almost like the least amount with her um but um because yeah we, we can't really do the direct comparison of like what her this what her version of like this outfit is going to look like um as well um so overall relatively fine there Sokka up next um again is this going to be what he's wearing for the entire show or is this just his sort of kind of ceremonial warrior outfit that he wears trying to defend the southern water tribe at the start but he'll well wear more of a typical Sokka outfit as we go forward um like i like the shoulders with the fur I think it's a little bit busy, um, the kind of like main part of the outfit around the chest. Um, I like the boomerang because it's very accurate compared to the uh, show accurate compared to the boomerang live action Sokka had um, from the last Airbender movie. Um, you know, stuff like the necklace that he's wearing, the um, the the hair I think is fine, and I think the 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 actor kind of embodies the character relatively well. Um, I again just wish we had maybe got a shot that i assume would be more representative of what he's uh more typically going to look like his more like comfortable in the earth kingdom kind of outfit kind of something equivalent to this um because I, i'm not sure we can fully judge this when i think this is like a, a scene specific outfit that we probably won't see him wear like again but who knows, maybe this is just the full outfit. In that case, I, I'm not the biggest fan of the, the kind of rings and stuff like that because you can see here that <clears throat> there's not a ton of like excess detailing on like say this, you know, the kind of clasps up here for the kind of shawl a little bit that he wears. Um, you know, Katara has some of the extra detailing here, but there's just a lot suddenly going on with Sokka. But in general, I think it, it's relatively okay. Uh, last up is Zuko and again, why did they decide to show us a shot with him with the helmet on and not with the helmet off? It obscures, I guess, some of the scar. We can't fully make out what the, the scar looks like overall because the helmet's in the way. Um, we don't get to see uh, the hairstyle at all either as well. Uh, and the shot is side on as well. So you can't even see a lot of his outfit. And like with all of them, they are not showing their legs like at all. So we don't get a full look at the design either. So I think that's a bit of a problem as well. I wish there was just a, a better selection to see a little bit more of the characters. Because like, why, why are you hiding it? Why are you being so uh, like stingy with this stuff? It's an adaptation. Like it was funny when in the interview they said, without spoilers, you know, tell us some of your thoughts about working on this and it's like you know you're hyping this up why are people excited for avatar live action because it's avatar and they're doing a live action version of it so it's something people are familiar with i get it you probably don't want to have the the character maybe talking directly about like the events of the siege of the north finale um and stuff like that but 
wording it like that makes the actor, I think, panic a little bit and be like, oh, I have to be very cautious about mentioning any detail about like any part of the show. And so they suddenly get like extremely vague about what they're talking about. And um, when you know, just talk about the opening scene, everyone knows the way Avatar starts. And uh, like if you're honestly spoiling someone on early Avatar because they're waiting to watch this adaptation, then kind of like I feel that that's their own fault. And um, so bit of a weird one on that but yeah it's kind of hard to get a full sense of this this is what uh, last airbender zuko looked like so here's his version of the same helmet actually you know surprisingly you know similar in quite a lot of ways i was never the biggest fan of the zuko outfit in the last airbender movie even though i felt delve patel was actually probably the best of the main cast in um the last airbender movie at portraying his character, because he actually had a little bit to do because uh, Zuko as, as a complex character is always going to give off some of those elements. And I thought this actor did it quite well. So I think we all have confidence that our new actor for Zuko here is going to do that well. I just wish we got a better look at uh, what you know th this guy actually looks like as Zuko. Um, again, helmet off. Like, wh why are you showing such a specific scene in like the one scene where he actually wears it? Um, and so on like i guess this is like the komodo rhino scene where are they um they, they're not showing any of that even though they teased like mentioning appa a few times we don't get to see appa we don't get to see momo the rhinos uh, anything like that in terms of set you know you can see some kind of like the structure in the background here looks pretty nice uh, there's the kind of water tribe symbol in the background it's all blurred there you get a sense for the way they're doing the kind of houses in the southern water tribe some um kind of weapon racks here it looks pretty good overall but again it would have been nice to see some footage um but there's not really too much to say specifically um what else do we have here we do have the logo they also did show this off um I think it's like fine like they're obviously using the normal uh logo for avatar just the word avatar and then their own unique <clears throat> their own unique stuff for the last airbender now the font is a bit weird it feels like they just did this so they could have the kind of nice effect of having the the arrow in the blank space between the or and the b um which you probably couldn't do if you had the more stylized text like avatar here because it's not as kind of uh, angular um why it's like kind of gold and shiny but it kind of looks like parchment or or kind of like stuff like that i'm not entirely sure but it's it's fine it's just the logo and um, at least we have one now um this is where you know obviously the the actual introduction sequence to the the show is going to be more of the kind of interesting thing um but this is just like nice to have overall um and then the only other thing we really have is that they said 2024 as the release date. So no, nothing's more specific than just the year 2024, which is probably the most disappointing thing about it all in that it, it seems to confirm a lot of the rumored delays that, yeah, uh, okay, we're not getting this this summer. We're not even getting this before the end of the year. We're going to have to wait until next year. And they can't even say with any sense of accuracy an idea. No, like, summer, no spring, autumn 2024, just at some point next year. That's That doesn't feel great. Now, you wonder why that is. Why can't they be more, slightly more accurate and say, like, February or March next year? I think that would be the hope from a lot of people is that that's what they mean by that, is that they're maybe hoping to hit that. But... The fact that they don't say it probably means we're maybe more thinking about middle of next year um, if they can't hit a, an earlier date, which is unfortunate because it means it, it probably adds basically an extra year onto kind of uh, well, when we actually expected to receive the show. So um, that's that. I, I think I, I, it won't matter too much, but what they need to do is... Now that the information has actually started, they need to use accounts like this and actually post stuff more regularly. Um, 
because we can't be waiting like months upon months for the next batch of screenshots like you need to actually have stuff to show us as we go forward which i think should be relatively okay like you've got the the kind of secondary kind of main cast so like you obviously have like iro uh, the first time we get a look at like say appa momo and characters like that is going to be pretty exciting just to see the rest of the cast in live action form and better shots of the characters we've already seen of course and then you have the you still have the hype of course building up to stuff like the first proper trailer where you're actually going to show footage where you're going to show dialogue and stuff like that so that's going to be um the the stuff that we're we're really waiting for to actually get a better sense for like how the show is actually going to play out because um i've always brought up the idea that i think the real tester for this show is going to be the the difference between we have eight episodes of live action that are, I suppose are going to be like, what, an hour long, give or take. We don't know what they mean by that specifically. Is that Does that mean every episode will be 60 minutes? Or does it mean every episode is going to be between 45 and 60 minutes? We don't actually know. But eight episodes are planned. And by the looks of things, they're adapting in or around 17 or 18 episodes of uh, Avatar Book 1. They seem to have the characters for all but a handful of episodes uh, and that is a lot to do in a pretty scattered book one story even from the animation it's a bit of a scattered story where the the water tribe stuff uh, southern water tribe stuff at the start into the southern air temple is pretty solid start the ending when you get to the northern water tribe is locked in place but the entire middle section is a bit weird in terms of like how are they actually going to make that kind of work properly um, with so many different elements, so many different characters going on. Are we just mashing episodes together and hoping it works that way or are we going to actually see some real switch arounds where like certain episodes that might happen much earlier on actually happen later on because you kind of have to kind of prioritize a lot of that stuff. Like you would say stuff like say episode four of Avatar into episode five, the warriors of Kyoshi into the King of Amashu, Suki and Bumi. They're two memorable, notable characters. Do you want to diminish those two episodes by having them both in the, be in the same episode as like halves? Uh, or do you want to split them up a little bit more? Especially because in The Warriors of Kyoshi, we assume you're going to do stuff with the fact that you have an actress for Kyoshi herself, Avatar Kyoshi. And you're going to have to do something there because of how popular that character has become. There's a reason you have actors for Roku, uh, Kyoshi, and Avatar Kurok, is that you, you, you're going to be doing something with them that maybe wasn't really there in the animation. Um, but you don't want that to get in the way of all this, like, other stuff going on so how do you do that uh like effectively um they're they're the real questions that i think we have here and um, but uh kind of wrapping it up there um like i said uh, i'm still pretty neutral kind of middle of the road on this this doesn't change my opinion kind of really either way it's about what i expected and there's like you know like i said stuff i like there's stuff i don't like and it overall comes together in terms of like, yeah, this seems solid enough. Um, it's not super convinced me that like this is still like a, a project that is like absolutely needed. But also with us knowing that we have the confidence of knowing Avatar Studios is on the horizon and we're getting more animated uh, stuff. Um, the pressure for me is very much off with this show. Like uh, if this is a success or a failure, um, it not, it's not going to have too much of an impact on me as such because I, uh, I'm already someone who doesn't like have huge issues with the last airbender movie I don't love that movie I don't hate that movie I'm middle of the road on it so I'm expecting to at the very least have a decent time with this show when it comes out and um, but I'm it's going to take a lot to get me like hyped and truly truly excited about this show and the main thing here is just that this initial first look reveal certainly didn't do that. Immediately, I think we're waiting for like, um, can we have some more? Because I think we need more to be able to actually judge properly what's, what's actually happening here. So um, there are my thoughts on the first look at Netflix live action avatar in the comments below. Let me know what your thoughts were on everything here. 
Um, does this give you confidence for the show? Uh, does it give you some fears about the show? Um, but what is the kind of next thing you want to see? Um, for me, I would like to see some footage. I'd like to just see a, some dialogue or something like that, just to see how, what they're going for from a like tonal point of view of like, is there going to be humor, a lot of humor here? Uh, are they going to try and cut back on the humor, but still have some? That's probably one of the, the biggest things in terms of like the last airbender had no humor. We want this to have a little bit, but I don't know if you can do the same level as the show. So that's going to be a nice balancing act to see how they uh, do that. But let me know what your thoughts were. That has been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.